Hey everybody and welcome to Board Game Heaven. In this episode I'm going to take a look at Dice Throne by Roxley Games. This is Season 1 and this is Season 2, the Kickstarter version. The retail edition of Season 2 will have boxes with two characters each, packed in these uh, game trays. And this is basically a game that you can play a one versus one, or two versus two in teams, or even three versus three, or two versus two versus two, or free for all, and it plays two to six players. And it's a game where you're trying to battle each other and try to uh, take away each other's hit points, and the last person standing wins the game. And you do that by rolling dice in a Yahtzee-like mechanism. So let's set up a game, I'll explain the rules, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. To set up a game of Dice Throne, you simply pick one of the many characters in the game, you take its tray and you take out all of the components. So first of all, you have the character board right here. You just put that on the table like so. And then you take the um, sheet here that has all of these abilities, uh, the status effects and the faces of your dice. And on the back, a little bit of a backstory and some frequently asked questions. You take your combat points tracker and you put it on two. You take your health tracker and you put it on 50, which is your starting health. You take your deck of cards and your turn order card. You keep that near, you can put that anywhere you want. And then you take your card uh, deck and you shuffle it and you draw four cards, which will be your starting hand and the rest will be your draw pile. You have your tokens with the status effects in here as well that you can take and you can place them on these spots over here and have them ready for when you use them. And finally, you take your five dice right here and you're ready to play. After you set up the game, each player takes one die, rolls it, and a player with the highest result starts the game. The turn order for the game is explained on this turn order card. So first you start with the upkeep phase where any applicable status effects like these uh, tokens over here are applied and resolved. Then is an income phase where you always gain one combat point and one card from your draw pile. And during the first player's first turn, the income phase is skipped. And then you go to the first main phase. And that's the time where you can play uh, cards uh, being uh, possible ability upgrades to increase your abilities on your card here, to play uh, main phase action cards, or to discard a card. And for each card that you discard, you can get a combat point. Next you will start your combat. So you start with your offensive roll phase where you take your five dice, you roll them and then you see which effect you want to apply and you get to re-roll twice just like in Yahtzee any number of dice that you choose. Then if you're playing with more than two players you decide who you target by rolling a die which is explained in the rules but in a one versus one game you can simply skip uh, step five here. Then you have the defensive role phase where your opponent uh, takes his defensive role and the defensive role is always explained in the bottom right over here and it can be different per character. And after combat is resolved and possible cards have been played to influence uh, that combat, you get another main phase where you can again play these cards with the M symbol and then you discard back down to six cards if you have more on your hand and that is the end of your turn. Every time you take damage you take your health uh, tracker and you lower that by a certain number of damage that you took and the first person to have been reduced to zero is out of the game and the last person standing wins. You can also heal up if you have healing abilities but you can never heal more than 10 points above your starting health. So if you start out with 50 and 60 is the maximum you can heal up to. Your combat points are basically the money you need to pay for your cards. 
Every card will have a symbol on the left here with the star and the number of CP, and that's the number of CP you have to spend to be able to play that card. So on your player board, you will see several things. Like we mentioned, there's these uh, slots that have these dice symbols on them, and they will technically tell you what you can do for your offense, uh, for your attack, basically with your dice results. And there is also one ultimate action here, which is the most powerful action you can take. There, some characters will have a, this passive action in the lower left corner, and all characters will have this defensive action in the green here uh, that takes place when being attacked. So some of your actions will trigger some of these uh, status effects. So you can gain honor or backstrike or inflict to shame. So the icons here represent these tokens and you simply take those tokens and apply them either to yourself or your opponent, depending on what it says on the ability. The status effects themselves are explained on your hero leaflet over here. And remember on the back of this leaflet, there is a frequently asked questions that explains some of the effects. Most of these effects will have a stack limit, which is indicated here. So you cannot have more than that number of tokens. There are status effects that are good for you and you can spend them to increase your attacks or other things. And there are tokens that are bad for you that you get from other players. And there are ways to remove those as well. Your hero deck will have several types of cards. You will find uh, upgrade cards in there which have a white border and they basically have a cost so you might need to spend combat points to play them. They play in the main phase which is indicated by the blue M symbol over there corresponding with these uh, symbols and they let you upgrade one of your basic uh, abilities. So this is Wakizashi 2 which is that ability over there and you can pay one if you have this card to just simply place it on top of this ability and it will increase that ability somehow. And there's also a level three of each of these abilities and that costs a bit more. But if you're upgrading straight from zero to three, you pay the two, uh, in this case, combat points that is indicated on the card. But if you already had an upgrade, then you only pay the difference being one in this case. There's also an upgrade for your defense ability uh, that each player has. And this is basically how you make your attacks or your defense stronger. So aside from upgrade guards, you also have action cards. And there are three types. So first of all, there's these blue uh, main phase action cards that also need to be played during a main phase. They have their cost over here and they have some kind of effect that will be explained on the card itself. And you can only play them during your own main phases, either before or after combat. Then there are roll phase action cards. And these are orange cards that can be played during uh, step four, five or six of the game where you basically roll for your attacks and they will change the values of dice or do some other effect. And they can be played during any player's turns. And finally, there are these red cards and they are basically interrupt cards indicated by the exclamation mark over here. And you can play them at any time during any player's turn and they will have an uh, immediate effect that cannot be interrupted. If you've played cards from your hand that weren't an upgrade and go on your player dashboard, you simply resolve what they do and you put them in your discard pile and whenever you run out of cards from your draw pile, you simply take your entire discard pile, shuffle that, and that forms your new draw pile. Now remember, you cannot have more than six cards in your hand, so at the end of your turn, if you have more than that, you need to discard cards to your discard pile until you have a maximum of six cards in your hand. Now the game has different types of damage. There is a regular damage, normal damage, and there is also undefendable damage. Now, normal damage is just this burst symbol in black with a white number in it. If that is red, like this one here, then that means that is undefendable damage and the opponent cannot use his defense skill to counter that attack. You can, however, play cards to enhance undefendable damage and that will just be undefendable damage as well. 
And there is also pure damage, collateral damage and ultimate damage, which is the damage that comes from your ultimate ability. And all of that is explained in the rulebook over here. And it tells you what kinds of damage can be defended against, avoided, enhanced or has special targeting rules. And basically that is explained in the rulebook quite clearly. So you need to read that first and then, you know, let that sink in uh, before playing. And you might have to uh, look that up uh, once or twice, but after having played these types of damage, you'll remember what they do. And finally, there are uh, some rules for four player games where you play two versus two in a team, or you're playing three player games, King of the Hill, and there are other modes. You can also play uh, three, four, five or six free for all games, or even three versus three. And that is all explained in the rules as well. And this is a living document. So uh, Roxley Games will have a digital version of this online, which they will keep up to date uh, regularly. And that is basically it. That's everything you need to know to start playing. Another fun thing is that these rules, uh, the version two, have these achievements in the back. So for each hero, there are certain achievements that you can tick off if you manage to do that during a game, which is also a lot of fun. And that's it. There's a quick reference card on the back as well for some of these uh, terms that they use in the game. And that's it. That's how you play Dice Phone. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Dice Throne by Roxley Games. Well, first of all, let's talk about the pros and let me start off with the production quality. So the production quality is really, really good. I love the fact that all these characters, at least starting from season two, come in these separate game trays and season one already had an insert with smaller trays with everything in it. So that was already uh, done very nicely, but I hear that it will get a, an upgraded version uh, of season one, which hopefully will have boxes like these as well, because they make setup so much quicker. You just grab one of these characters, you open the box and you take out your character sheet and you just put it on the table. You have this already and your, 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 your frequently asked questions and your abilities are here. You get your cards and your, uh, your health tracker, your um, combat point tracker and your dice and everything is nicely tucked inside here and that just works brilliantly. So I love that and so that is really a big bonus uh, for me uh, that they thought of this and that's just going the extra mile I think in the production uh, value. Furthermore the cards are of a good quality. They are thick enough. They're not the thickest kind but they are thick enough to be handled uh, a lot and they have a, a kind of a linen finish to them as well. And, uh, well, you have this great, uh, you know, combat point tracker that just works really well and is also nicely illustrated. Your health tracker is fine as well with these uh, turning uh, discs here so you can keep track of your health easily. And that is very helpful. The tokens themselves are of a decent quality. The cardboard is thick enough. The colors are very vibrant. Uh, so the artwork of the game is also really cool. I love the cartoony style. All the characters have a very different, um, well, different feel and um, they're all in the same kind of uh, cartoon kind of style. And there is even a web comic about some of the characters on the Roxley website. So you can wanna ch check that out as well. So there is even a bit of a backstory to all these characters and to the game itself, which is kind of cool. Uh, furthermore, I love that all the characters are asymmetrical. So each character has a different way of playing and a different way of reacting to others. And there's a lot of combos possible. You'll be playing versus different characters here. And we know between season one and two, there's already 14 characters to choose from. And season three will introduce a lot more even uh, so, you know, you could end up with 20 or 22 uh, characters to combine. So when you're playing team versus team, you could, you know, end up with two different characters having a very unique synergy uh, between them. So that is also something that is a lot of fun to discover. I also like the fact that there are uh, each of these characters have these custom dice. 
they're of a medium size, uh, they do not have rounded corners, uh, which I kind of like in dice rolling games, but they do have engraved sides and they're all colored uh, in season two. Season one still had uh, the same colors of uh, symbols, but they are going to change as well in the new season one. So that's nice, you have these custom dice. So all in all, the production quality, the presentation and the way it's stored is absolutely fantastic. I love that. So um, there's also a point that I find a bit uh, that's a neutral for me. It's, it's, it has a negative and a positive side. And that is what I mentioned is that there are so many characters and they're all different. They are well balanced. And, you know, I find that games are pretty tight, uh, you know, with the most different characters against each other. That does, if, if you both, you know, uh, are familiar with the game, maybe the first game won't be as tight. Uh, but uh, once you get to know how your character plays, you know, the battles are pretty intense and um, you won't have one player, uh, you know, totally overpowering the other. Uh, I've played with the, uh, um, the Gunslinger versus the Barbarian and the Gunslinger, she shoots a lot, but she also dodges a lot and she has the dual defense ability so she can half the damage that she gets while the Barbarian is just a powerhouse dealing a lot of damage and he can heal himself so he's nigh impossible, you think, to, uh, to bring down to zero health but still I won because I did have some, uh, some you know, well, maybe you could say some lucky rolls but you have your cards to, to influence what you roll and everything so, yeah, there's a lot of strategy there, and I kind of like that. I do like uh, the fact that you're rolling in this Yahtzee-style um, uh, manner, and um, you can choose, you know, from your first roll already, so do I have anything on my player board that I can use, that I can attack with, or do I press my luck and roll on? So there's a lot to learn, because they're all different. So that is on one side it's a positive point because there's a lot of gameplay there and it's fun to figure out how they play on the downside there is a lot of uh, looking up rules uh, the first time you play a character versus another character there will be some interactions where certain uh, effects that you have or abilities or these status effects uh, will kind of will interfere, they will resolve in a certain way, and you're not always sure how exactly to resolve them. So you'll have to look that up. Now your character sheets will have, uh, you know, on their backside, uh, frequently asked questions. So some of these abilities are uh, explained over here. And that does help a lot. And even if you don't really, if you aren't really sure after reading that, then it's usually just a logical thing to do. Um, and you can always just, you know, ask Roxley uh, the right way to resolve them because they are quite responsive and you can go to Board Game Geek as well. But that is a little bit of a downside because there are so many characters and they're all different. You will encounter situations where you think, okay, so how exactly do I resolve this? Do I, do I go first? Does this effect go first? How does that work exactly? And because of the many, many different combinations that you can uh, pit against each other, you're going to experience some of these questions um, the first time you play uh, a lot. Um, so it has a bit of a learning curve there. Not that the game is hard because the rules is also a positive point, are very easy to learn and very easy to teach. Basically, it's everything that's on this turn order card, that's everything you need to know. And on the back of the card, there's some information about card timing that will help a lot. Um, but you might still encounter some questions. Um, then there is another thing that I find kind of neutral. That is the fact that it is uh, basically a luck based game because you do have that Yahtzee element in it. Now, personally, I like that a lot. I love games like King of Tokyo as well. And this is basically a little bit more a uh, gamer kind of game, uh, you know, whereas Ga King of Tokyo is kind of like a gateway game, a family game. This is just one step up. If you want to take it a bit further, this is really the game to go to, I think. But some people do not enjoy the luck-based factor in here, even though you have cards to change your results, and even though um, you you can choose from a lot of things from your from your player board. Um, there is always something you can do. 
So that doesn't bother me that much. I like to roll and just see what I get and see what I can do with that and, you know, just roll with it, literally. But other people might not enjoy that. So if you don't like King of Tokyo, then you'll probably not like this as well. But if you love King of Tokyo, this is definitely something to check out. So a con I have with the game is that it is heavily language dependent. There's a lot of English text in the game, on the cards, on your ability uh, board. And if your friends don't speak English, then this is not going to be a game you can play with them. So there is that. Uh, there are a lot of symbols in here. So, you know, you could technically teach it, but still the cards will have a lot of text on them. Some of them will even just have text and no symbols at all. So, yeah, this is, uh, in essence, a language-dependent game. So uh, if you don't grasp the English language uh, very well, then this game is going to be difficult. So like I said, there are many effects that need uh, frequently asked questions, but most of that is covered on your own player sheet. Um, there is also uh, the fact that when you play it with multiple players, uh, so not one versus one, but two versus two, or even more, three versus three, or free for all with uh, more than two or three players, then you will have some downtime because, well, the, the, the turns are relatively quick, uh, and especially if you've played a game a couple of times, you'll be a lot faster taking your turn, but you're still rolling, you're still deciding what to do, do I press my luck, do I play a card, so there's still some decision-making uh, that's going on that does take a bit of time. So when you're playing like five or six players, then you will have some downtime. And also when you're playing free for all or you know uh, three versus three, then at some point you will be faced with player elimination, which is also something that's not always desirable uh, because you know, you'll be out of the game. If you're the first person to reach zero hit points, you're out of the game and the rest still needs to finish and that can go on for a while with five players remaining so there is that there is player elimination and there is downtime so really i enjoy this game most in a one versus one game and maybe a two versus two that's doable or a three player free for all that's all fine and well but if you go beyond that you'll have some downtime and you'll have player elimination but having said that, I do really enjoy uh, Dice Throne. I think it's a wonderful game, it's a quick game, it's easy to learn, easy to teach, and again, if you like games like King of Tokyo, you will certainly like this, if you want to take it that one step further. Alright, so uh, in the end, I'm certainly giving this a two thumbs up, and that is uh, Dice Throne Season 2. Also, check out uh, Dice Throne Adventures, which is on Kickstarter on July uh, 16th. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go and check that out. And also keep an eye out for Season 3 later on. So that's uh, Dice Throne by Roxley Games. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and please subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.